Ray Wheatley for five years. I'm here with Australia's boxing great Sharky Raymond. How are you, Sharky? Good, good thanks, Ray. Really good to well, see you, mate. You're looking at a million dollars, Sharky. You're uh, yeah. lost weight. You've been in training for a while. Yeah, doing a bit. Yeah. <laughs> You're punching the bag again? Very slowly. <laughs> Uh, Shaggy, let's just go through your career, mate. First of all, you, uh, you had a record of 33, 1 and 1 with 27 KOs. You were born David Bruce Ballard on the 21st of June, 1950, in Golgong. Uh, your brother John was a boxer. He's your older brother. Yeah. Uh, your father was Squire Ballard. Um, you're well known, mate, as the, as the referee at the Opera House when Ken Salisbury on the Australian title of Felix Timokov. So yeah, you're that's also a referee. A pretty infamous situation. But yeah, uh, yeah. It was a big night, mate. The Opera House. It wasn't that big of a night, but it turned out a big one. Yeah. Uh, okay, mate, let's just get on to your fights, eh? Uh, could you tell me about, was there any other fighters in your family besides yourself and uh, John? Uh, uh, my f stepbrother Ken, he had a few fights in tents and that sort of thing, but I don't think he. But that was the only, only, yeah, only other guy in the And, and, and uh, my brother John, he, he fought and mm. had quite a, a you know a good career in yep. the um, professional. He was. He was one of the best lightweights yeah, in Australia. Yeah. Well, he was. He was he very was good. He was, he, yeah. was, he was never knocked off his feet in all, his whole career. So. Ricky Squire. Yeah. That John was him. Ballard. That was him. And you were Sharky Raymond. How'd you get that oh, name, Sharky Graham? Oh, off Burnie Hall, and I went to, um, took Graham Haynes up to Newcastle to fight, and Graham's opponent pulled out, and I was going to be an amateur, stay an amateur, and Bernie told me that um, I could have a fight under another name, and he put yeah. the thing around my arm to take my blood pressure and when the doctor said what's your name son he said uh, Sharky Raymond and I just stood there dumbfounded <laughs> as you yeah. would you'd say who you're talking to I changed my <laughs> name in two seconds <laughs> well it's a great name Sharky you certainly made a great name of it mm. now you, you, you had 11, 11 amateur fights and uh, Bernie Hall had a talk to you mate brought you along to his uh, Oxford Street gym and you were living at the gym, right? And uh, another yeah. good fighter by the name of Ray McGrady was there at the same time. Yes. Did you have any problems with Ray? Uh, um, where do you want me to start? Tell me about that. Was there a blue over the, the bed with sleeping well, arrangements? Um, my wife, Jan, used to get clean sheets for my bed and, and uh, always made me have clean sheets and that sort of stuff. I had a little small bed in the and up over the where you could jump over the top was only about five or six foot high. So mm -hmm. one night Ray jumped into my bed when I was at the fights at South Sydney. So when I come home, I asked him nicely, would he get out of the bed? And uh, he let a bit of a barrage of unseemly words fly at me and asked me, who do I think I am? And all that sort of and one word led to another. And I give him the five count. I said, you got five seconds to get out. <laughs> And then uh, he, he grabbed a bottle of coke and tried to hit me over the head with it. And, and I, I connected with the right hand, followed by a left hook. And uh, <laughs> he went splattering over near the side of the ring. Anyway, that caused a lot of trouble. Yeah. Now, he was very good as a, as a professional too. He started off at a young age and he beat uh, the great Hector Thompson when he was about, I think he was only 16 or 17 years of age in the 10 round. So he was... Mm. Very good boxer yeah, he himself. Was a very good. Uh, he had a lot of ability and yeah. uh, he was very good at, the, at at boxing. Yeah, yeah. Now, in 1970, you started your career and uh, against Graham Haynes, as you said, mate. Um, you didn't realise you were fighting until you got up there, up to Newcastle. And in 1970, you also beat Dennis Bell, Roman Brown, Ted Hunter, Chris Collinson, Tony Tomasic, Ray Valance. Chris Collinson, uh, Danny Keegan, Toby Smith, you beat him in, uh, Tony Smith, you beat him in, Mel uh, no, you fought a draw with him in Melbourne, with uh, Johnny Famichon as the, the referee on TV ringside. Now, your first 10 round bout was against uh, Barry Watson, who had a record of 6 2 and 1. Tell me about that first 10 round he had, Sharky, well, against Barry Watson. You know, Back in the early days, I was, a, I was a bit nervous, I suppose. I suppose like anybody starting out. Mm. But, um, yeah, I was a bit nervous. And, you know, you don't perform your best when, you're when you've got a bit of nerves and that sort of thing. But once you get into it and, and you get yourself prepared properly for a fight and you know in your own heart and mind that you're 100% 
mentally and physically fit, yeah, uh, you're going to take some beating. Of course, mate. Of course. And now that was ten rounds. And you know, I don't think you knocked everyone out previous to that. So, um, yeah. so mate, your your next up was uh, you got to you defeated Frank Roberts, then yep. Joe Sorby, mm -hmm. Bronco Hurrigan, Eddie Mad Eddie Manuela. You beat him on two occasions. Yeah. Then you, in 71, you suffered the only loss of your career against Fred Echawadi. You're much bigger. You weighed uh, 10 pounds heavier than you. He had a record of 9 2 and 1. Can you tell me about that fight with Fred Echawadi? Yeah, I don't remember that much about it, but um, I know he's a big bloke, and we were, we were fighting a bloke out of our gym, and he broke his thumb. Uh, the night he worked on a door somewhere at a club in King's Cross and busted his thumb. and and I was just wasn't training properly for the fight because I had to, you know, make sure he went the full ten rounds or eight rounds, whatever it was. Mm. And um, and then because he he had to pull out of the fight, they bought a substitute from he was he come they said he come from New Zealand and he was quite a fair bit heavier and I think he's even heavier than what they put down on mm. the on the, the the record of the boxing. You know, yeah. the, the weight he was he was about a bit it's over a stone. Heavy weight. Yeah, he was a lot about a stone heavier. Yeah. But not making excuses, I... Um, it was a competitive fight. I can't... Um, I, I couldn't... I can't think that much of the fight. I don't, mm. th I don't think it was that much in it because... No. I remember... I think I might have had him down one round and uh, he got up. I think I got really tired, mm. what I remember of it, but... Because uh, yeah, you'd only uh, just started fighting. Yeah, I think... Uh, I wasn't prepared for the fight. I'm not making excuses, no. but uh, I wasn't prepared for it. And we did challenge to fight him straight after that and he wouldn't fight, so... We couldn't get the fight back no, on, on he deck. He wasn't again. interested. No, and anyway, that's mm. one blemish I had on my record. And the only blemish, mm. and made you certainly made up for that. Now they brought up a very tough guy from Melbourne, South Port, Les Painter, had a record six six wins, three losses. Uh, a very tough guy. He's the nephew of uh, Brett McCormick, president yeah. of the Australian Boxing Hall of Fame. So, tell me about that fight with Les Painter. Well, that was another fight I was. In TV, I oh, was TV ring. No, no, that was uh, they brought him up to South. Sydney. Oh, South Sydney, that's right. Hang on, I'm getting mixed up here. But yeah, well, that those painter, he had a, a good reputation, and uh, yeah, he was a pretty good fighter. And uh, I don't know, I think I just um, he, I just beat him on points. I think didn't I? No, no, you, you just stopped him in a late round. I think oh, okay. Came. Well, um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if it was. Uh, I don't remember. Very tough guy. He was beating yeah. everyone in Melbourne. Yeah, he was very tough, well, fella. Yeah. But um, anyway, we, it turned out the way it turned, and I don't remember that much of that fight actually. I, okay. I don't know why, but uh, now on TV ringside again, hmm. September nineteen seventy one, you defeated the very popular Brendan Jackson. Um, could you yeah. tell me about that fight? That you had two fights with Brendan Jackson. Yeah, tell me about that first fight. The first fight I fought Jackson, uh, we matched up and. I'd arrived in Melbourne, we went around to the weigh-in and um, he walked up to me and said, I'm going to kill you tonight. I've just gotten over my divorce today. He said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to really... <laughs> he used a few expletives and he said, I'm, going to, I'm really going to give it to you. And I said, and I just looked at him and I said, well, I'll see you out in the middle, eh? And that's what happened. I beat him on points you and he challenged me straight away over the TV ringside, he said, I'll, yeah. I'll knock him out next time, and next time I didn't The following month, one month follow, later, four weeks later, he's back in the ring again. And I think I might have stopped you him. You stopped him second time round. The so. second time round, yeah, that, that's how I thought it meant. And mate, then they started bringing in importations for you. You fought the very tough, clever Englishman, the experienced too, uh, Dick Duffy, who had wins over Bunny Sterling on two occasions, it was Commonwealth champ, Bunny Sterling, fought Tony Mundine. Uh, Don McMillan, who had beaten a uh, well-rated Pierre Fury. So tell me about your fight with Dick Duffy, 72. Yeah, uh, what I think about Dick, Dick was a, um, a nuggety sort of a boxer that uh, was very, he had a good head movement, yeah, good head movement and he, he could move around and he was very tricky and hard to hit. But a couple of times I caught up with him yep. and... Um, yeah, I went on to beat him. So that was good experience. You went the ten rounds. Yeah, it was out. very good experience to go around with such a clever guy. And, and I think he had well over forty fights when you fought. Yeah, and as I say, he had two wins over Bunny Sterling, which Australian people would know. He fought a draw 
the Tony Mundine Australia, mm. and uh, the outstanding Pierre Fiore, uh, he beat him as well. So very good, very good performance. Yeah. Uh, now you won the Aussie light middleweight title in your next fight against Paul Lovi. Lovi uh, had a record of 33, 8 and 2, very experienced. You knocked him out in three three rounds. Tell me about. Well, that fight was supposed to be Johnny Galuso, but um, we had a, they had a meeting at South Sydney Juniors, and I was told if I didn't sign the contract with Bernie Hall, and they wouldn't give me the fight after I'd already signed up for it at the registry office, but uh, and that caused a bit of a um, bad feeling in myself. So I just got on the train. It was my twenty first birthday. I'll never forget it. And I spent in the train going back to Mudgee. Mm. My dad met me, but anyway that. After about six weeks, they come up and said they have another opponent and would I please come back and and that sort of stuff. So I fell in for the second time and then come back and, and Paul was my opponent and we... Uh, yeah, Some battle for the Australian white middleweight title. White middleweight title, which I ended up... I won in the third round. You knocked him out in the third round. Great performance. Now, not long after that, one, probably one of your biggest fights of your career, I'm sure it was, when you won the Commonwealth title. From uh, Pat Twy, you stopped Pat Twy in eight rounds, but he did have you down. Tell me about that fight. Yeah, well, that was another fight that I, <clears throat> when I, <clears throat> I trained well for that fight, and I was pretty well prepared, very well prepared. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, well, surprised you when you put you down. Um, yeah, I think yeah, it did surprise me. You I, weren't I, badly hurt. I, no, I just was. Just I thought I thought it was too far away from him, but he. He shot a real round um, right you. hooker oh. and hit me on the on, on the uh, left side of the temple and knocked me, just stunned me for a few seconds, but knocked me to the ground and uh, and then I um, got up then and um, got my act together. Now it was around this time that you were um, you were booked to, to go to New Mia for a fight with uh, the great M. L. Griffith. Now apparently while you were over there. Uh, they couldn't get hold of Griffith, so they were going to put you in with Manuel Ferrier. Is that right? And the money changed a bit. Can you tell me about the story about well, that? Well, yes, I went over. I had a contract signed for, uh, I think it was 35000 It was a lot of money back those days to fight him or Griffith mm. in Yamiya. Right. When, when we were on arrival, um, I found out that uh, uh, a couple of days before the fight that Griffith wasn't allowed to come. Anyway... Um, and they brought this guy in, who was a fair bit heavier, his name was um, Manuel Fierro, and uh, yeah, it looked like, I don't know what happened there, the fight got pulled off anyway, they, they wouldn't give us the money, I don't think they had any money, the promoters, mm. and um, I think they offered me 5000 and we agreed on the figure of seven, and then we got down close to the fight, they said, no, we're going to have to pull the fights off, so pulled it off on arriving at home from near me to Sydney, I went to the gym a couple of days later and the phone rang and it was Red Slayton from Brisbane and uh, the first thing he said, oh Sharky, I'm glad you answered the phone. I said, well, yeah, what's up Reg? He said, look, they reckon you scribbed out on that manual for Aero over in uh, New Mia. And I said, oh yeah, that's not right Reg. I said, he said, well, what if I give you 20,000, would you come up and fight him in a couple of weeks? I said, well, just book the tickets, Reg, and I'll be up tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've done a great job on Ferry. That was your last, right? Manuel yeah. Ferrier, well, by the way, had knocked out uh, Oscar Alvarado, went on to win the world, world title. and uh, What, the world junior middleweight title? World uh, WBA welterweight title. Welterweight title, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. No, light middleweight title, light sorry. Middleweight You're title. right. Yep, yep. And uh, so... And uh, I think uh, you'd he, rated num number one in the world. Yeah. You would have knocked that title if had your uh, had your opportunity. Now another uh, probably your toughest opponent was Jacques Ketchikan from France. Can you tell me about that one, Jack? Yeah, we went over to New Mia for that fight, and um, yeah, he was a stocky bloke. Uh, you beat him on points. Yeah, I beat him on points, but it was a war because it was he, he was um, he was pretty confident he was going to beat me, and, and we went all the way and. I don't know whether there was a lot in it. A lot of blokes said that I won fairly comfortably, but um, it was a tough fight. You know, I, I busted eye the finish, and he got quite a few onto me. But you know, I certainly a great I, win, Sharky. I got a, I yeah. got a, I got a quite a few on him. I can tell you. And Sharky, you went into the Hall of Fame in two thousand and nine.
inducted and well done. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Thank you very much Do for appreciate that, Chuck. It. You're a champion, mate. You're a champion, champion. You've been a mate of mine for a long time. Yeah, 40 years, Chuck. Thanks, mate.